Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it is a toasty day here in Southwest Florida and I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to show you uh, my Odom's Cattleya Odom's Grandalite. And I just wanted to share this with you first because this is one of my most favorite orchids. Um, I've used this for a lot of my crosses because I really like the flower. I like the vigor of the plant. Um, and from here, with very little wind, I can smell this flower. So this is, this is a great plant. I've got um, these two flowers. This flower here has been open, I think, probably for about two and a half, three weeks. Um, these, this opened maybe a week ago and this opened uh, a few days ago. Um, and there's a seed capsule right here. Uh, but when this plant grows, it puts out a new pseudobulb and uh, that, and then a flower comes out of it. Um, I, I really do like this plant. I have, I think about, um, I think, uh, I have seven registered crosses out of this plant and a whole variety of different things. And the eighth registered cross, hopefully the seeds that are in this capsule uh, will develop and I'll get more out of that. Um, the second thing that I want to talk to about with you today and the most important thing and the main thing that the video is about um, is about orchids and cacti. I uh, think that it's good to know about orchids and about orchid growth. Uh, and I'm going to talk about photosynthesis in orchids and cacti today. Don't, don't turn me off. I think it's important. I, I think it's good to know about the plants that you're growing. And the important thing is the more that you know about uh, the physiology of the plants, how they grow, I've focused a little bit and pretty recently on orchid roots. And I want to talk about uh, today another aspect of the physiology of these plants and how it relates to these plants. So, and this is uh, the physiology and the physiological process that, that I want to talk with you about today is photosynthesis. Um, don't turn me off. Uh, photosynthesis is obviously the most important process on the planet. Uh, what it does is it allows the plants to grow, but it also allows us to survive. What happens during photosynthesis is that the plants use the energy of the sun to split water and take in CO2. All right? When water gets split, what's happened, water is H2O, and when water gets split, it releases through certain reactions, it releases oxygen. So that's where oxygen comes from, is the photosynthesis from water splitting from the energy of the sun. What the plant does with that, that, that energy and that whole process is it takes CO2 that we breathe out and it makes certain sugars carbohydrates and certain sugars. Um, and that's, that's important for process. So it breathes in, the plants breathe in essentially the CO2 and they breathe out oxygen, which is good for us. Um, so plants will breathe in oxygen. I'm sorry, <laughs> they need oxygen also because they're respiring and they're making energy like us. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So they'll breathe in the CO2 and then make, uh, make sugars, carbohydrates, and, make, and they use the sun and they, they make the energy that way and they store the energy that way. And that's how, that's in general how it works. But the way that orchids do it is very similar to the way that cacti do it. And, and that's a little weird, a little bit unusual when I first found out about this uh, years ago. Um, and you would think, okay, what is, what is the similarity between orchids and cacti? And that, and that is through the process of photosynthesis. <clears throat> and it's because these plants all, they, they have similar, um, similar growing conditions, which is kind of surprised. Now, when I grow Odom's Grandalite, it grows in, in the seat of a chair, a uh, cutout chair, and right next to it is this cactus that is growing in 
Leca. And um, this, this cactus and this orchid, are, are they're growing together, and they're growing like this, and they're growing in the same. So there's Leca in here. I'm not going to reach into the pot because I'll get, I'll get poked. Um, but there's similar Leca that's in this pot with this orchid. And this is, just so you know, this is prickly pear, which is a native orchid, uh, native cactus that is found in Florida. Okay, let's get back to photosynthesis and why this is the, the why this is interesting and why you need to know this. Cacti and orchids are both plants that conduct photosynthesis in a way that conserves water. So most other, most of the other uh, terrestrial plants, the ones that I have around me, the palm trees behind me, they have a little bit of a different photosynthetic process and they have different water absorbing capabilities and everything else. Um, orchids will breathe at night. They take in the CO2 they let out oxygen at night. Cacti do the same thing. They breathe at night. They take in the CO2, they breathe out oxygen at night. They conduct a photosynthetic process called CAM photosynthesis, C-A-M. C-A-M, and I'm not going to get into great detail on it because you don't need to know this. You, there's a few points that, that need to go home with you. Um, it's called Crassulaceae acid metabolism. And the Crassulaceae is because of the type of plants that this process was discovered in. Um, but what um, both the orchids and the cactus do, like I said, is they open the pores and the leaves. The pores and the leaves are, are call, called stomates and they breathe at night because in the daytime under the condition that both of these plants grow, water can be limiting. So there, it is a water conservation measure that they open the pores and the leaves at night to breathe. Both these plants do it again the same way. Now you'd think, okay, why do orchids need to do this? Well, orchids, when they're growing in the wild, in the native conditions, their roots are attached to the plant and they're growing on you know, a tree or a rock or whatever they grow on, and there it's it's kind of perceived by the plant as low water conditions. It can rain every day, but then that then the rain the water disappears. So there are terrestrial orchids, but these orchids, this this orchid here, and the majority that I grow, and maybe the majority that you grow, are cam orchids. They're succulent leaves, thick leaves, and they grow under conditions. Um, m much of the day and much of their life, they grow under low water conditions. Um, but again, the important thing is that they, it's that you have to understand is that orchids don't, they don't really need to be watered a huge amount because their photosynthetic properties make it so that they conserve water when they're growing. So they breathe, like I said, they breathe in CO2, they breathe out oxygen at night, and they do that again to keep the pores and their leaves closed in the day for water conservation, to minimize water loss. Again, orchids do it, cacti do it. So they share this process of CAM photosynthesis. So what the, the reason that, that, that this happens is that they open up, they, but they don't have light at night when they breathe in. Normally you think, okay, they're going to breathe in the CO2 and they're going to make sugars when the light energy is there. But they separated the processes in time. So they bring in the CO2, they make a different molecule out of it, and then in the daytime when the light is shining, when they can do this, they conduct another process of another type of photosynthesis. All right, don't want to get things too complicated, but they separate the different, the breathing in the CO2 and the making of sugars, they actually separate that between the day and the night. And that's an interesting process. And, and again, I'm sharing this with you because both of these, believe it or not, this orchid and this cactus, um, similar photosynthetic processes, they, they actually, they're growing here in the same medium, right next to each other, they get the same amount of water, they get the same amount of light, and both of them are doing quite
quite well. Um, so again, I want you to keep this in mind as you're trying to soak your, your orchids, you know, in their medium. Hopefully the medium like the one I use is light and airy and it, and it flows out. Um, again, one of, the, one of the fastest ways to kill your orchid is to have it sit in, in a wet medium for way too long. And I just, I just wanted to share that and have you be aware of photosynthesis and orchids and cacti and how these two plants are, are similar in this very inter interesting way. Uh, the final thing I do want to share with you is that not all orchids are cam plants. All right? And that's what, that's what these guys are both called. Only the thick-leaved ones are. So there's the cattleyas are, the phalaenopsis are, dendrobiums are, but many of them are not. So on, on CNM, I don't know whether you can see them behind me, those are not um, those are not cam plants. Uh, I've got some catacetums. Those are not cam plants. That's, that's a, that's a, they're a little bit different. So, and those plants tend to have a little bit more of a finer root system, more of a, more of a terrestrial plant type root system. So it's a little bit of a different process. But again, this is one I wanted to make you aware of as you grow your orchids and as you hopefully don't overwater them. All right, I hope I haven't confused you too much. Um, if you want to look into this, again, I didn't explain the process in too much detail. Um, if you want to, you can certainly take a look at it in, in more depth. If you have any questions about the process, you can certainly uh, put those in some of the comments and I'll try to answer those for you. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for you today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.